Well, welcome. Good. Great. Uh, um, late. I had a phone call and then it took me a while to get to you. Well, you were working last night, weren't you? Uh, yeah. Here's a little present for you. This is something I did with David Liebman about two months ago for Rough Mix. Oh, thank it's you. The Sidney Bechet tunes. Oh, wow. Which is not something that David Liebman is normally associated Sidney with. Sidney Bechet with, with the vibrato and everything? <laughs> well, actually, no. He, he chose not to dev not to uh, try to copy Bechet oh. exactly, but he sort of inhabited the spirit of Bechet in a really nice way. And they're all Bechet tunes except for Summertime. Well, that's the beginning uh, of yeah, stuff it's, right it's there. It's actually pretty interesting. I mean, he struck a really nice balance, I think, between... Still sounding like him, but trying to kind of inhabit the Shea spirit. Just, a just a duo. Just the two of us, yeah. Well, that should be. I've got a few overdubs that I put on it out here. Beautiful. It's Man, not quite great. finished, but it's close enough to. Our so own. this is mine then. That's for you. Okay. Well, I'm gonna rip it up and put it in my. All right. And uh, yeah, here's your stand. Here's I wanted you to do me a favor and sign that, John. Sure. And uh, here's your money and a pay pay envelope. Thank you very much. So uh, just get settled and. Yep. Sorry, well, like I said, I had a. Actually, Dave called me this morning because we're still in the process, so that's why I'm a little late. So, sorry about that. So, are you going to. Do you guys just run in and just do the. Without rehearsal? Or just say. Yeah, we had a quick rehearsal. I mean, I hired him basically. I do some stuff with this little independent label called Origin. I've got probably a dozen with uh, with him, including this one. Oh. So, I've done two other ones with Dave for that label, and I just thought if I could hire him again, he said yes. Well, where's he working? Was he on the East Coast? Dave um, was in Pennsylvania. Okay. He's, 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 he's an East Coast guy. But I met him 45 years ago. He used to play with my teacher. That's how I know him. Oh, back way back in Connecticut. Connecticut, days. that's where I grew up. Yeah. So. Oh, the Connecticut guitar players, man. That uh, I never. Schofield, I remember, Abercrombie. Yeah, because I played a show once, and, and it was I think it was Zorba the Greek, mm -hmm. and they had been up in Hartford or something, and he says, "I want you to play it like the guy in Connecticut did." He's <laughs> going, "Okay, is there a sound of Connecticut?" Mm -hmm. or? Not exactly. <laughs> But I just thought, okay, Connecticut, yeah. Mm. Need the water. So you're keeping busy and doing well, I hope? Well, yeah. Um, you I'm kind of teaching here? Or? Yeah, yeah. I've, I've, I'm teaching here. I'm uh, really kind of, you know, in a limbo. I, I, ha I the only, I, that's why it's it's good for me to play with, with other players because I haven't been doing that. I've been playing solo, solo, solo. So mm -hmm. really with only about four, three or four gigs with, I have a couple with Ed Bennett and mm -hmm. two with Tim Gilson. Very good. And um, but it's been a lot of solo stuff. And Ben, I'll uh, sign this for you. Okay. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. You had a chance to hear it yet? Yeah. What do you think? Oh yeah. Like it okay? Oh yeah. Oh man, does does he ever get a big fat bass sound? Yes, he does. Man, it's Thank big. You for buying this. It's great, man. It's going in my car. And you've got your old friends. And John Bishop co-owns the label. Yeah, I don't know him. So he's the so who is the drummer? John Bishop. Yeah. He, the two drummers who own this label. He's one of them. So. Thank you. Here, My pleasure. Here. Thank you for buying it. Yeah. Hey, you're. Uh, you know, I wonder if you know or are aware of this, John. But you're on Amazon.com. Yeah, and so you're. Yeah, you're, I'm out, I'm And out. so, but I see here. What I do is I just talk to Alexa, and if I want to hear. Uh, your arrangement or something of like Prelude to it. a Kiss. I know it's just yeah. like Alexa, play John Stowell Prelude to a Kiss. So that'll, that'll do that for you. Great. Thank you. That's one of the things which I think you probably have from Dave is a transcription of that solo. Uh, that's, I've, that's got, that's, I've got I've got the PDFs the up here. That's I haven't got the, that yet. That is part of the handouts. If you just keep going to the very end, go to the very uh -huh. end of what you have there. All right. Here, there it is. Yes. What do you know? Oh, man. Man, I believe me. That's my buddy Don Thompson. I love him. And Dave Liebman's actually on that same record. I'm just on three tracks. I'm on that particular one. Well, we were all well in that's how you could probably help me get away from the ordinary, uh, like a... Uh, well, well, that sounds fine. Well, has an arrangement with all this incredible counterpoint underneath. Yeah, I see it. This, this, this so all, right that's, all that's fine. I mean, all then. that's fine. <laughs> yeah, got some nice voicings going too. One thing that Jimmy did, which I've started to do in the middle of hearing him, yes. is just break the chords apart into double stops. So just break them into smaller voicings. I'll show you what I mean. Okay. And uh, Jimmy was a master of that. Oh, yeah, he's phenomenal. He's one of, he's one of my heroes. And if 
he was into the sweet tea guy. Is he, is he passed away? Jimmy lived to be almost 89. He died maybe five years ago. And I, knew, oh, I got a chance to meet him when he was still in good health in his early 80s. Yeah, I'll switch that one for you. Yeah, thank you. You know the one. Thank you. <coughs> Jimmy was a wonderful guy and a uh, spectacular player. And Beverly, my favorite. Well, player. wasn't he with Red Norvo playing? Red Norvo and Benny Goodman both, but he did mostly uh, sort of freelance work around L.A. He was very low-key about his career. He didn't really promote himself. But he was just a wonderful guy and uh, a spectacular musician. He could read anything. Mm, and, uh, yeah. He just had this incredible, beautiful sound. And so, well, let me show you what I mean by... Am I in tune, John? Check this out. <laughs> close. So what Jimmy would do... You know, Jimmy would just... chord forms yeah, and striking, thinning them out. Thinning them out into double stops. Well, you know, that seems to work for, for a lot of different things. Even, like, what I was going to try to have you do for me, that is going to be a, a wonderful, is to, uh, I've been looking at, like, s some of these the chords that you, yeah, yeah like and I'm out. going, I'm going, well, you know, to me, that's my G7 uh, 13 flat 5 oh, chord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, so I'm going, well, wait, John's got, he's got the half step above, uh, uh, yeah. he's got the, whole, the, the, the one below, he's got the F one here. Yeah, essentially what I'm giving you now is I'm giving you the, I'm giving you the four modes of the melodic minor that give you tensions over dominant, but I'm explaining them as keys of melodic minor over dominant. This is how Lynn Chamberlain gave this stuff to me in the 70s. So rather than say super locally in seventh mode, I'm saying let's play melodic minor ideas. Ahead of oh, melodic okay, minor. yeah, because some of those modes are not so great. Like the, two of them the, are two of them are used more often than the other two, but they all work. So in other words, if you think C sharp melodic minor, so here's the C sharp minor major nine chord you just played, but we're thinking this like a C seven sharp right, nine. Right, right, right. So that means I'm taking any kind of a melodic minor chord, any kind of a C sharp. Well, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm using that as yeah, exactly. I'm using it as a C dominant. Okay, well then. I've been working my butt off uh, the last year. As a matter of fact, it's a year yesterday, and mm -hmm. it's kind of wonderful that you're here because it'll kickstart me to the next year. Mm -hmm. uh, I've taken uh, Pat Martino, who, who yeah, I think is a very singing time. type of a guitarist, he can be. And uh, when when we have when we're looking at these like C Dorian and other things, I'm saying, okay, John is introducing, or this mode is introducing. A note that I'm not real familiar with. Like I'm not going to start the F melodic minor on F against the C. I mean, I'm not going to go. Probably not. Don't do that. Just, you know, well, you maybe. Could, you could potentially it's just just a sus, right? And that would just be this. You could certainly start on F if you wanted to. That's just the four. If, the sus, yeah, so I, I, at this point, though, I'm not hearing it. I'm yeah. hearing more like this, John. Of the, it, tell me what I'm missing here. I, I want to thin these lines out, mm -hmm. and and and. So there's just too many notes. If I play, if you play that chord for me, please. Sure. And I play. Major nine. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That all works. That all works. I mean, the idea is to mix together enough of the C dominant in there that it sounds like an extension of C dominant. So you want to put some of the original. Dominant but what am I? My question is, oh, what am I missing? Am you I might just play a little more in the way of arpeggios if things feel a little tight or a little dense. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. Just play, exactly. Just play the arpeggios. Yeah. Exactly. That's it. Yeah, this is what I do. So, yeah, yeah, so what, what about the A flat triad that's in there? Do you think mm -hmm. of that? Uh, I mean, triads are a whole other topic. 
So, so this A flat triad is really just. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's yeah. I mean, the A flat triad could be lots of things. It could be that, but A flat triad also works over C seven. But we're not it? talking about that. Okay, so. Yeah, so this could also be not so different from this, and this could also be C A only in minor, but could, that could also be kind of a C seven. I mean, it could be. So what chord would if I took the G flat seven flat five, thirteen, and then um, took the modes out of this? I mean, I mean, which I haven't done yet. But uh, see, when I see these chords and I see this chord, I just think I go right to G flat automatically. Well, G flat and C with the triad. So but but so triad. depending on the alteration, we're going okay. Listen, and now you've got this. You've got the flat. You got. Yeah. Now you've got that. Now we're not going to play this mode. Yeah, but you understand, all these have multiple applications, right? In other words, lots of things can be. Everything can be many things. So okay. the trick is just to narrow it down. Here's what I did, Don. Took me a while to do. Yeah. I haven't. You have this. You, you know this. I one. don't know that book, but I'm familiar with Pat's playing. So. Oh, okay, good. Well, well I suggest we do first. Let's just play a tune. Okay. Let's play a tune. Beautiful. How about night and day. If you want to pull, um, if you want to take this, you certainly may. Okay. Play a statement. Got my little thing there. What should we play? Um, well, how about the play a standard. Night and day. You got it. Because because uh, I want to hear this. Yeah. So. Yeah, so you understand. Before, before we jump into night and day, let me throw one more at you that uh, you may know this already. One option over half diminished is nice, but it also applies to the five chord if you're playing a two half diminished five one, which is that opening cadence to night and day. So the sixth mode of melodic minor is Lothian and sharp two. So against that D half diminished, play F melodic minor, minor third above. Okay, so what's the minor seven flat five chord? Here's half diminished, that first chord of that if you play F melodic minor dot, yes, I do. that's going to give you the E natural. So, exactly. So I'll play F melodic minor voicings as D half diminished. As D half diminished. Yeah, F melodic minor. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Now understand yeah. also that F melodic minor is also G13 flat 9 with a sub, so that also could apply to the 5 chord. So if I'm looking at this cadence to get to C, Minor for both pulling in the chord tones of the that's exactly direction. what I've been working on okay because like I'll think of this at what that F, F melodic minor chord is to me is is all or all these yeah. chords so that, yeah so F melodic so, minor essentially is a modified D half diminished it's also a modified G7 it's S the I go right to F melodic minor yeah. okay yeah yeah so the F melodic minor is giving you the E natural against the half diminished exactly now now that's it. So playing something uh, that yeah, already, obviously. is uh, silly I might just do because you're here. I might have. I might just fall off the cliff and play something silly. That's all right. <laughs> let's, let's play the tune together. You know what I like to do that Jim Hall enjoyed doing also, rather than put the melody um, at the beginning and the end of the tune. Sometimes I like to start with improvising together, melody at the end only. Let's try that. Let's take like one course together, improvising together. Okay. Do you want to play ahead or? Uh, no head. Head at the end only. Oh, that's right. No head. So at the play, end, I mean, play at, the, together. And at the end of the tune, you can play. But I like yeah. this chord, this this G. I think of this as a G seven flat nine sus four. It's that you could also you could also think a flat major, which is also kind of yes, the same thing. right. Oh, uh, let me. So, so these all, I mean, all, everything is many things. This could be a flat major augmented. This could be low green sharp two. This could be G thirteen with a flat nine and a sus. So all these all these kinds of shades. Of I like this sound. I do too. So it's it's kind of a modified five basically, but it's also a modified two. Now now are we if we do the if, if I just do the vamp and go like this, we're miss I'm missing out on the Yeah, I mean it's nice to hear the five records. You wanna hear you wanna hear yeah, that? It's, yeah. not, it's not critical. I mean if you want if you wanted to leave out something, I think the important part there is the five chord. Okay, well let's try to do it as a boss and then I can You got it. In. So soloing together? Let's solo together. Let's solo together. Solo together. We're improvising together. Good luck, John. <laughs> One course Where's together. Where's the time? Wherever you want it. Okay. One, two. two. One, two, three. Oh, the, the bottom. Okay, John. Okay, just a second. I got it in the vamp. Okay, drop my part. Very Something sorry. Down. Very One, sorry. Very sorry. Two.
Oh, well, that's very nice to, well. nice to hear, John, especially from you. Um, you know, one thing you might consider, what I like to do sometimes with these older tunes, um, even in a duo setting, is move the time around a little bit so we have asymmetrical phrases. So rather than going... Things are not four beats. Things are three beats or five beats. I'm anticipating or delaying resolution. You mean you're jumping in on a three as a one? Yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm still in four four, and I'm keeping the chart in my head as it exists in the original form. But I'm moving things around a little bit. I'm displacing the. I'm displacing the phrases. I'm playing. Okay, well, let's try. Let me so in other words, instead of one two three four one two three four, so everything is even. I might be going one two three four one two three four. But my head is still one two. Playing might be. Let's try a little experiment. Do you want a bass note though? Uh, yeah, what I'd like you to do, what, what you can do to help yourself keep track of where I am, once you play a bass note, you can listen to how I'm moving things around. So, so like I mean, a, a simple way to do it now would be just anticipate something by a beat. One, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. I'm landing on one, two, three. Yeah. So which, once you play a bass note, I think you can kind of keep it together. A so big, like a five chord for that five just beats. a big swoop in the in the time. Yeah. So, but the trick is, though, I mean, the way to train yourself how to do this is just to do it in kind of an intellectual way. I'm going to play a, a, a chord for five beats instead of four, or three beats instead of four. So one, two, three, four is one resolution. So we could go one, two, three, four, one, two. Yeah. So there are ways to either delay or anticipate things. So you're just not playing things four, four beats. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four. Could be one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two three. three. Yeah. Um, yeah. Can you do that? Yeah, yes, you can. Yeah, I mean, there are any, anything other than four beats each. Anything other than four beats. Now, it's hard, yeah. hard when I'm playing the bass line yeah. at the same so, time. Let's try a little uh, experiment. Oh, oh. I'm, I'm going to do it. Okay. And what I want you to do is, I'm, I'll just play the opening cadence. Uh, you just try to keep track of the original number of beats as you listen okay. to me. All right. Just listen. One, two, four. So displacing is, is 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 your word for syncopation, or no, it just means I'm doing something other than four beats per for four beats per chord. I'm playing over the bar, so it could be three beats, could be five beats, anything other than four beats. Okay, so if it's just a general beats. rule, you could say one is a great anticipation. Yeah, one is a good one to start with. One, two, three, four. Okay, and then four is your yeah. next one, and then maybe and a three or yeah. something. Just one, two, three. Of, uh, uh, absolutely. Yeah, sure. One and two and three. And Left anything other than four beats and four beats. But John, that's how I've made a living. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not everybody like no, not everybody likes to play this way. In fact, for some people, this is the wrong choice. But for the people, oh no, like no, this, no, 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 I know what you mean. I, I, drummers think that way. Yeah. Uh, so do bass players. Yeah, the bass player might be going. Okay. And you still get the tonic. Let's try a little experiment. Now I'm going to play a bass line. I want you to still keep track. Two, okay. one, two. John, you're also, that is kind of funky. Too. I know, it's cool. So it's lots of it's ties cool. in that case. Oh, I'll tied. use that. Yeah. So, dong, ka ding, da ka dong, ka ding, da ka ding. My head is still one, two, three. And it still swings. So the trick, the trick 
to doing that. I mean, part of it is having a rhythmic vocabulary. Part of yeah. it is being able to internalize this. One, two, three, four, one. Even if I'm going. Four. right now in the air and just and just do while you play that I'm, okay. hey, why, don't you, why don't you play the chord straight and just kind of kind of try to feel my syncopation to this two one two three four. is it bossa or just straight chords bossa is fine two. two one two three four But that's too. that's kind of cool. You're you're. Yeah. I'll do that in my solo too, Don. Yeah. Okay. So my solo might be. See now, this is it's a there's a lot of good lines in here. That's about but, eighth notes, pretty much. But this is about eighth notes. Yeah, but it also, okay. but, but also what I did, you know, just to I'm let sure you know, there's lots of good I wrote out the four, yeah. the chords that each line goes. So he's with. got vocabulary there for you. That's fine. And it's and it's great for it helps your yeah. you know it's yeah, like yeah, an eighth note picking. Yeah, that, that's that's pat. That's all about great eighth notes. Gr great eighth notes and and the fact that I am I feel so duh each one of these lines like if you've got F minor seven if you've got A flat major seven B flat seven yes. or F seven and D minor seven flat five. That's right. That's right. So I so mean, I thought that was a lot to think about. You also you understand also that any melodic minor vocabulary that you acquire. Just learning how to play melodic minor lines with melodies <coughs> works in four keys over a dominant chord. And each time yeah. you move that idea to a new key, it's a different combination of tension. So if you have a C sharp melodic minor line that you like, a C7 altered, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then you transpose that down a minor third to B flat. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the point being, that's going to say if it's a B flat melodic minor against C, it's going to. But does it have to be a C altered, or can it be no, C7? No, Baron. No, this is all C7, but it's a different amount of tension. If you're taking something in C sharp or B flat, B flat has no altered fives. It has raised and lowered. So nine that was my question. Was one of my questions was. Don, the, the point being, the point I'm making is when you acquire some melodic minor vocabulary mm -hmm. and you play it in each one of those four keys, which essentially is referencing the four modes, mm -hmm. that's going to give you a different amount of tension. F and G melodic minor have one tension only. That's flat 13 or uh, Lydian dominant, which is 9 sharp 11. So in other words, if you let's just try let's take an example. Pat Martino does this with Dorian. He says, "Here's D Dorian. It's also it's all the other things that it could be G7 mm -hmm, and so mm -hmm, forth." Mm -hmm. So the same thing with melodic minor, but it's it's introducing tensions in a way that the Dorian does not. His his ideas are, are certainly fine too. So just play a melodic minor line on C sharp. This is what you like on C sharp. Okay. Okay. Now take that same line, and if you, if you have to move to another place on the neck, play that same line in B flat. Same line in B flat melodic. Minor. Do it? Yeah. Okay, so, so the point I'm making is B flat melodic minor, you're playing 13 flat 9. This is what B flat melodic minor is giving you. Exactly. So B flat melodic minor is giving you this. You know, I got to hear. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah B flat melodic minor has, yeah, B flat melodic minor has no A flat, it has a, has a note there. And what did I play? getting out of there. Okay. Yeah, a flat would work as a choice over C7. Specifically. See, that's the thing, man. My fingers are doing the like kind of key lines. Just, just, just go a little slower so you can really hear the sounds. Too. Yes. So if you play a B flat melodic minor against C, you can hold the other sus too. Okay, no A flat. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now the A flat is certainly a note that you're going to use in another context over C7. Yeah. All right. Now let me show you something else that's interesting, Don. This is all being taped, I'm assuming. It's going. Good. Okay. Now B flat major is a nice C sus. B flat major just gives you an 11, although I'm almost there. So B flat major is just C sus. B flat melodic minor. I'm sorry. Yeah. B flat melodic minor is 
sus flat nine, or thirteen flat nine. So if you go from a D flat major over C, so just right, here's B flat major and C seven. That gives you the nine, the eleven, and the thirteen. Exactly. Now to make a melodic minor, we simply drop the D down to the D flat. And now we have a nice thirteen flat nine. Yeah, so try yeah, so try a little B flat major and B flat melodic minor together for me over C. You want me to play line? Yeah, play some lines. Okay, play over B, you want major to minor and B flat. I want B flat major to B flat melodic okay. minor, but thinking of them both as C seven. Okay. Good. Try a little experiment. Bossa nova, two beats each, two bars each. Okay. Two, three, four. B flat major. Good. B flat melodic minor. B flat major. Melodic minor. Oh, it's my A flat. Ah! All you're doing all there, right. you're playing the third, you're playing the nine, eleven, and thirteen if you play major, and then you're playing I was gonna write that flat down, nine, eleven, gonna... and thirteen when you play yeah, melodic this... minor. That's the sound. So if we go back from major to melodic minor, it's quite a nice sound. We have this major, melodic minor. So are you considering this a C sus? Yes. And the other one is sus flat nine. So that well that 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 outlines it quite well. It's a nice sound, isn't it? Yeah. That means in every position on, and every kind of a B flat major to melodic minor. Any kind of a B flat major to melodic minor. So here's a here's a B flat major. B flat major is major nine. So it could be up here. Oh. Right over that. And then melodic minor. Here's I'll get thrown up again. with your headstock. I'm counting frets That's or something. Don't do that. <laughs> So here's major. So all we're, we're just trying to find the nine and make it a flat nine too. Right. So this could be okay. Nice so this is the C seven sus. This, yeah. This this is all about C seven. We're using B flat major. Then when you major. do that, then you use that and flat nine. Your flat nine is on top in that case. Exactly. Exactly. So take any kind of a B flat major chord and make it a melodic minor chord, and those both affect the dominant the whole tone above. Exactly. That's the sound. So that means in every position, you want to go from, so. So in other words, you're going from C sharp, melodic minor. Yeah, I was, this, this is all B flat still. I was playing B flat major and B flat minor. Oh, okay. I so thought you were going to combine major. the two. We, we can if we have enough time, absolutely. <laughs> major to melodic minor. A lifetime. By the way, in C sharp, we can do the same thing. C sharp major, that's C Phrygian, that's also C dominant. So we can do the same thing in C sharp major and melodic minor, the same over C. Yeah, so C sharp major done is C Phrygian minor. It's C sharp flat, major. C sharp major against C minor is C Phrygian minor. It's flat six and flat two. You mean a D flat chord flat over? C major, C Phrygian minor. That's Phrygian that's minor. Let me show you a real simple way. To, I'm gonna let's take a little five-minute detour. We're gonna talk about all the different diatonic minor modes using major arpeggios, which are really the way to dial them all in, and that all that kind of factors in here. If I'm looking at, if I take the minor modes in order from most consonant to most dissonant, they don't fall in the same order as they do in the scale. It's not melodic minor, minor, just yeah, minor. No, I'm, modes. I'm talking about diatonic modes okay. now, major scale. Okay. If in order in the scale they go from Dorian second mode, mm -hmm. Phrygian third mm -hmm. mode. Aeolian sixth mode, Locrian seventh mode. If we take them in order from most consonant to most dissonant, the order changes. Dorian, Aeolian, Phrygian, Locrian. Most in terms of consonant to dissonant. Consonant is the beta Dorian. Yeah. So I can use major arpeggios to generate all those minor modes. As I just said, D flat major, I just touched on one of them. If you start with the relative major, and this is both Ionian and Ligon, go up a minor third from the uh, Okay, so you're going up C Dorian. I'm going up a minor third and starting on E flat major, e -flat major. C minor nine. So E flat, E flat major is giving you, you know, and if we play Lydian, e, C Dorian minor. If I play, if I play E flat major against that, it's just minor nine. Okay, so E flat major is C Dorian. Yes? Right. Okay. If I play E flat Lydian, it's also still C Dorian. Now we have minor six nine. Now we have this. 
or six times. So here's minor nine, doing minor six nine. Okay. okay, so if I play E flat linear again instead. Shape of C Dorian down. Take a look at this shape. You know, this, this real straight yeah. Lydian chord. It's a nice C minor 6 9. Yeah. Right. So, so now here's, here's this very simple formula. We're going to go up in fourths. So we start on the Lydian. You know, we're starting a minor third above the relative major over the minor. So E flat major, Ionian and Lydian gives us C Dorian. Okay. If I go up a fourth to A flat, Ionian and Lydian, this gives me C Aeolian. Let's go up a fourth. Now I have an A flat. I did the A flat. A flat gives me C Aeolian. This is Aeolian now. Now I've got a flat six. Yes, this is C Aeolian. C Aeolian minor. I just went up a fourth to A flat major over C minor. And I've gone to C Aeolian minor. I'm taking the. I'm well, taking what is a lot, kind of a line, John? See. I can follow you up to, to a point. <clears throat> I know the modes. I haven't okay. played all the arpeggios in the modes. I'm going to give you a real simple formula. I, I should finish up. There are four key, there are four, there are four diatonic minor modes, and we're just going to play four keys of major against those. We're just moving up in fourths. E flat, A flat, D flat, and G flat. And that gives you C Dorian, C Aeolian, C Phrygian, and C Locrian. So if I play okay. E flat major against C minor, it's Dorian. If I play A flat major, it's C Aeolian. Are we still question. playing against the one chord? This is all over C minor. I'm just going through the different diatonic minor modes over C but, minor. But will it work with this chord, all of the modes? No. We have to we have to move through different keys for the different modes. So that chord that chord will work in different C. keys. This is all C minor. Take that same voicing to A flat. Now you have C A O N. Same voicing. Now take that same voicing down to D flat, you have C Phrygian. Now take that same voicing to G flat, you have C Locrian. I am glad I'm taking. Okay, so all, all this is real simple. We're using major chords and arpeggios to generate the diatonic minor modes. And the four diatonic minor modes are in order from most consonant to most dissonant, to Dorian, Dorian, Aeolian, Phrygian, and Locrian. So, now, so bear in mind, if we're, playing, if, we're playing, if we're playing a modal tune, we might potentially combine a couple of these diatonic minor modes together. They're just flavors of minor. So if I have enough time, if I'm looking at impressions, or if someone says vamp on a minor chord, one thing I'll do is mix together some of these diatonic minor modes. I could go from Dorian to Phrygian. E flat, take, take, take this voicing, E flat, and then play down to D flat. I just skip from Dorian to Phrygian. A flat. Uh, no, this is all C. C Phrygian. C, C Dorian, C Phrygian. So watch. So that's what the D flat major gives me. It gives me flat six and flat two. Yeah. Now if I play, if I want to play, I can add the other two as well. I could play. I could can potentially mix all those together over one set of over one um, solo line based on a minor chord. If I have enough time to do it, and it's not an old recording instrument, I have enough freedom and time to do it. I could mix together the diatonic minor modes in one key. And still, the ear will. Here, yeah, I mean, essentially, your ear will begin to hear the difference between Dorian and Phrygian. If you go back and forth between E flat and D flat major over C minor, you're hearing no tensions with the Dorian. The D flat gives you flat three and flat six. That's what the D flat major gives you. Here's Dorian with the six and the two, and here's Phrygian, flat six, flat two. So clearly, Phrygian has more tension than Dorian, and it has two notes that are different. Now. The so what do I need to do to get to that point? Just play major arpeggios and chords in those four keys. Relative major, here's the real simple formula. Any key, you go from minor third from the minor to the relative major. Yeah. So from the C, e flat, e flat, and then go up in fourths. E flat yeah. major, A flat, Ionian and Lydian, A flat, D e flat, flat, G flat. E flat. That covers all the diatonic minor modes using major arpeggios. Rather than learning different arpeggios for the different minor modes, we're simply using, kind of like Pat Martino, finding multiple applications for Dorian. We're finding multiple applications of major arpeggios to come up with the different diatonic minor modes. Now, these are against seventh chords. Minor seventh. Now, minor. bear in mind, each one is a different flavor of minor. Dorian has the least... But minor. then again, you're saying, like you're saying, when we're talking about the minor seventh chord yeah. being here, it's also yes. F7, it's yeah. also yes. A minor yeah, seven, flat five. Is, it's also bear in mind, as we go into the different diatonic minor modes, and they are different. In other words, an Aeolian chord is not always the same as Dorian is. So do you think that 
So this is all about just giving you access to different minor sounds. Right now. Well, what I loved about what you did does that there. just make sense to you? Well, it's a pretty simple formula. I'll have to no, I'll review it on but, the. But it's a simple formula in principle. We're simply taking major arpeggios, Ionian and Lydian, in four keys to generate the different diatonic minor modes against a key. minor chord. Against one minor chord, okay. four minor, but each one is different. It's four different minor modes, but it's right. all within the general realm of minor. Because every time you shift the mode, you're shifting the chord. Uh, yeah, but, I mean, but it's still a very it's still a variation on a minor chord. Those are all C minor, oh, okay. but they're Got different it. versions of C minor. C Dorian is different from C Aeolian. C Aeolian is different by one note. C Aeolian is different from C Phrygian. One well, note. how much more difficult is that your, your formula that you gave me was half step above, whole step below, no, this fourth and fifth? This is dominant. This, this is another. This is another, this another world. world. But I'm just world. saying. It's the I, same idea. It's we're the same the, idea. In the sense that we get but I just need to get that. Multiple applications of one sound. In that case, it was melodic minors over dominant. In this right. case, it's major over minor. Right, major over minor. It's the same minor. idea. It's layers of sound. So that, that simple formula, again, Don, is just simply taking four different minor, four different diatonic minor modes and using major arpeggios to generate the minor modes. And the formula is real simple. Up a minor third and then go up in fourths. Take any key of the minor chord, go up, up, go up a minor third to the relative major, and then go up in fourths. So how would I apply that to a chord progression? Well, depending on depending on whether it's a one, if it's a one minor, then you might have a little bit more freedom to factor different sounds in. If it's a two or a three, but it's got to move because, like if you, like you said, if it's impression or I, yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah, I mean, so, if you're yeah, there, yeah. Now, typically, you're going to start with Dorian. But the point being, can you reference some of those other notes as passing yeah, tones? Absolutely, yeah, you can. Yeah. Absolutely. If you listen to anybody soloing over impressions, they might reference a flat nine or a flat six, or they might touch upon a Phrygian or an Aeolian. Well, in these, minor. in these five, I don't want to work that hard, I don't think. But, I think, but, but, but it's a pretty simple formula, isn't it? The formula sounds simple. It yeah. sounds like a, I'm just looking just to apply major, it. I'm just, just take, looking to just take, well, I think this grab would, onto This would probably apply. work best if, 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 the one is, if, if the minor chord in question is a, is a one chord. Because if it's a two or a three, some of these would work better than others. Now, sometimes a two is half diminished. Sometimes two is locrian, especially if one is minor. See, now here, I've, my crutch is what I'm, I, 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 I'm definitely going to study that. What I need to don't know, though, is have lines. Okay, well, what you want to do is... Oh, I, the yeah, the Dorian is the most consonant. Yes. So, for example, to go back and forth between Dorian and Phrygian, although you're in D minor now. Oh, sorry. So, again, again we could also work in D minor, obviously. Yeah. C, the C minor to E flat to F or to A flat to, to G flat to G flat to G flat. Yeah, so what I'd suggest is maybe taking one or two of these and going back and forth. Go back and forth between E flat and D flat. Let's try that. The E flat, e flat just major. try it? Uh, major. Major arpeggio. One, three, five, seven. Right, right. Now go down a whole step to D flat. Now you're playing Phrygian. Go back and forth. Let's try a little bossing over against that. Just yes. E flat to D flat? E flat, e flat major seventh. You right. can also, and you can also oh, play major the seventh. Major seventh. This gives you the nine. Because it's the nine. You could also play the Lydian. This the gives D. you the sixth nine. Both of these could be Lydian. You could also play Lydian. So this side. Right. Yeah, so I'm going to play a little bossa nova. We're Just going to go Dorian, Yeah, we're going to go Dorian Phrygian, two bars each. Okay, what the voicing you want here? Uh, that's, that, that one works okay. for sure. Okay. So, I, 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 what I'd like, what I'd like to do is, 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 is play some lines. Okay. Now, well, I'll give this. this. For E flat. E flat. Now you're playing Phrygian. Oh, man, see, I want to stick that Lydian in there. You can. What you're playing is Dorian to Phrygian, which you're just using major arpeggios to get there. Does that sound good to you? Sounded good to me. So what, what the Phrygian is giving you that the Dorian is not is additional tension because the two and the six are flatted. The two and the six yes. are flatted. We have a D flat and an A flat on. Yeah. So essentially, I, th I think you're playing E flat now instead of D flat. Oh. Yeah. 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 So if you're playing the scale, that's also going to work. If you play the arpeggio, if you play the arpeggio, you're going to have flat three, flat six. So. Right, exactly. Okay, so what this is giving you essentially is no tension to some tension. Yeah. Yeah. Now, is there a situation where you could potentially go from Dorian to Phrygian? Absolutely. If you're sitting on a modal tune or you have even a couple of bars or something, you could potentially combine them. You could combine them. 
Yeah. Now, there's some tens that call for a specific pentatonic minor mode. It might say C phrygian, in which case you're playing phrygian. The point being, on a modal tune, especially if you're the only chordal instrument, you have some freedom to introduce some of these as passing tones, even if they're not called for. If it just says C minor, all of these are potentially usable. Again, depending on how much time you have to play over the chord, whether or not there's a second chordal instrument, how the other guys are using tensions, and so forth. Well, so the, the chord has shifted from, from here to there, and you're D-flat now. You've gone from Dorian to Phrygian. By Dorian right? to Phrygian, Dorian to Phrygian. Now, if we went A-flat to G-flat, we would be going Aeolian Locrian. Take those same voicings and play them up here. Yeah, so now, of course, we can use other voicings, too. Yeah, so now we're playing, yeah, now we're playing, now we're playing Aeolian to Locrian. So this is quite a bit more tension. Now we're going from this. So I could go Dorian to Phrygian. Now I could go Locrian, Aeolian to Locrian. Right, so Dorian. Oh, back to yeah. Dorian. So that could be a little exercise where you're going through all four minor modes using major yeah. divisions. Right. And then. What Aeolian gives you is flat six, and what Locrian gives you, of course, is flat five. That's half diminished. We can switch to this. You know, so we could also mix them up. We could go Dorian Locrian. We could go Phrygian Aeolian. The point being, we're just using major sounds to get us there. Yeah, we're just taking. I mean, you could certainly use one voicing, but any kind of an any kind of a major voicing, Ionian or Lydian, would work potentially in those four keys over the minor. Nice sounds, right? So you start to really hear an Aeolian or Phrygian. Combinations of them, and then eventually you just have all these tensions available to you to use as passing. Tones. Well, how do I know? Even if someone's playing this, I might still use some of those other notes as passing tones. I don't want to sit on this for too long if you're expecting Dorian. But so, how who decides how much tension we need? I mean, let's just ask that the question. That's this very. This depends on shared vocabulary. Who are you playing with? <coughs> Could you potentially have some friends that you're doing a jam session with and say, "Hey, guys." Here's some harmony. Let's try this out. Someone's going to say, yeah, that sounds like fun. Let's set aside some time at the beginning or the end of the session. What I'll do sometimes, and you can tape it for yourself here, I will take away what is the most important element of the music, namely the spontaneity, and I'll agree in advance to do just what we're doing. So I'm saying, let's play Dorian to Phrygian. If we're playing over a tune together, I wouldn't say that to you. We're just in the moment to yeah, play yeah, a minor yeah, chord. Yeah. But to really hear the difference and dial in each one of those sounds, you can create a backing track where you know in advance that the content of the chord and the content of the line will match exactly because it's a plan, it's a drill to really hear each individual sound, to hear the difference between Dorian and Frisian <coughs> right. or Dorian and Aeolian. That's why I think I should slow down and you should hear definitely these slow down to hear them. To hear them because it's Play like... Play them as a ballad. Maybe or take, you take a minor blues, a slow minor blues, well one and four are minor, and go through and make the minor chords each one of those different if I land, minors. If I land on a note that is like t a half step or something that's kind of dissonant and maybe inappropriate. Well, then, then and then it's like, no, I'm just saying it's more tension tone. than you would, quote, Wait, want. You treat it as a passing tone. <laughs> so for, <laughs> listen, if you listen to the difference down between Dorian and Dorian and Aeolian and Aeolian, so now I'm playing two Aeolian minors with flat sixes. So I play Dorian, Aeolian, So you take a okay, John. Wait a second. There's something I have not done. Is that has taken the modes in those chords and made voicings of every single one of those yes, modes. I mean, right, all you, That's all you a lot do, of work. All you do is just, just pull in the tension. Take the chords you know already. Take a yeah. basic yeah. F minor and make it. That's what I was thinking about that last night. You just take relative. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. But I mean, it's an easy way to do that. Down is just take these different keys of major that I told you. So an A flat well, major is a nice C minor. Well, wait a minute, though, John. Just slow down just a second. I want I want what you just said. Because I pretty well versed in my drop two voicings, right. and so when we get the diminished chord, we have the four different right. Right. sounds out of there. Okay, so now if I want to go even a little bit further out, I've got to do some odd fingering. So if I'm doing e, uh, F major seventh right. here, oh, okay, now you're going to flat the five, or now you're going to do, you're going to make it a minor seven flat right. five. Right. Now you're going to make it a minor major right. seven. Now right. you're going to that. Right. How do I get into some more tensions, though, from see, here? Well, I mean, again, with these, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, essentially, these different major keys will introduce the tensions for you. If you play a sharp five major over a minor, 
if you play B flat major over F minor, you're automatically playing Aeolian. Did you say D flat? Yeah, remember they, 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 the formula, it was up a minor third and then up a right. fourth. So yeah, A flat course. major gives you Dorian. Up a minor third, so F minor, we're starting in A flat now. We, we just transposed up a fourth. We were in C minor, now we're in F minor. So A flat okay. major, Ion and Iridian are nice F minor voices. Yeah. No, Pat thing. covers a lot of this, right. man. So A flat relative major Pat's gives you Dorian. Uh, yeah, everyone has a little different way to do this. Uh, then go up a fourth from A flat to D flat. Now we have that's Aeolian. But so what notes am I missing when you're? What I think I'm hearing you say is like Don. You need to hear the major arpeggios. I you hear the, the tension yeah. instead of running a line, which could be or like yeah. in C minor, could be. Let's see, I've got chromatic. That's okay. I mean, all that, I mean, that's, that's just another realm. I mean, that, that's Pat Martino. That's all fine. But the point I'm making is the arpeggios give you the wider intervals. The arpe and, and, and that's what I noticed yeah. on your on you know, your. One is, not, one is not better than the other. You want to use them both. Oh, by the way, I gave you water if you Thank if you. Want to one is not better than the other. They're, they're different. So sometimes I'll play close intervals too, but I tend to favor the chord tones. I like the wider intervals. Mm -hmm. So A flat major gives you, gives you F. That's a pretty voice. Here. Which is this. I just took away the, the fifth and put it down here. going up in fourths, right? Then G flat gives you Phrygian. Then you go up one more fourth to B. Gives you Locrian. So just take take you know take major voicings in those different keys and the tensions are built into the voicing. In other words, if you just go up a minor third, as I said, and go through those four keys up in fourths, you've got Dorian. Aeolian, Phrygian, and Locrian. So you're just moving major arpeggios around to generate the diatonic minor mode. So what, what, um, I so mean, it's a brilliant, major, it's yeah, beautiful. It's, I think it's, it's, a it's a pretty simple way to move through the diatonic minor modes. Go up a minor third, then go up in fourth. Yeah, go up in fourth. So fours. C minor could be E flat, A flat, D flat, or G flat major. That gives you C Dorian, C Aeolian, C Phrygian. So are there any lines that you have written out in these? It's a there are, there. there. Yeah, some, some of it's in there. Some sure. of it's in there. There's, there's quite a bit in there. I mean, I'm probably there is. more it's a lot. Than now, triads are another realm, too. So let's circle back to dominant for a second because okay. we didn't cover all those keys. But the point I, the way, the way I do all this, Don, is thinking of this as layers of harmony. Layers of harmony. The bottom layer are the real basic arpeggio. So sometimes you do want to play a real basic minor seventh arpeggio, mm -hmm. one flat three, five flat seven, when you're referencing some of the more complex sounds so that you hear the foundation sometimes in your lines, too. And Pat Martino is good at that. So sometimes you want to hear a real basic minor sound, even if you're introducing Phrygians or Locrians or yeah. whatever it is you're doing. So it shouldn't always be about tension. And a lot of this also has to do with who you're playing with, how much time you have to play over a chord, what the tune is telling you. So sometimes I use very little tension. I mean, I just want the tensions to be available to me when I feel it's appropriate to use them. Some of this depends on whether or not there's a second chordal instrument, if there's piano or another guitar, and what they're playing is going to influence my choices too. How much tension oh, yeah, are they absolutely. How much? How do they respond to the tensions I'm introducing? So circling back, like you said, to the dominant chord. If yeah. I uh, uh, so okay. sometimes I want to hear C E G B flat. Like but there's no formula. Seven. Like for instance, if you're saying if you're playing this chord, you're saying okay, a lot. But you're going to go me. I'm going to go probably to A flat minor uh, melodic minor. I'm going to play A flat melodic minor is the alter. If you're looking okay. at G seven, the four keys in the key of G. But, but that's really a G seven. So now we're going to now if I play G seven, okay, now what am I doing? Because well, I don't have the sharp five. Well, again, I think I think I think the trick to this stuff down is moving back and forth between the basic sound and the sounds that are introducing tension. In other words, when am I going to get to just hear the notes and quit messing around with this? And well, I just would like, suggest going slow. I would go, slow, go a little slower so you can really create some. I mean, I think going slowly sometimes allows you to not only hear how the tensions interact with the basic sounds, but also allows you to get away from the memorized licks because you're that, playing slowly. Okay, that's what your fingers want to do. Yeah, but your Jim, fingers I mean, want to do the memorized our, licks. Our instrument is very pattern oriented, but I think improvising to me, improvising and creating interesting melodies is about deconstructing those patterns and creating mm -hmm, your own mm -hmm. melodies. Mm -hmm. So some of that is just acquired by just playing enough that you begin to develop a melodic vocabulary. Some of this is borrowing from other folks. Uh, some but introducing, I like what you did for four, three, four minutes ago when you when you said introducing the tensions with the chords there. So yeah. if you if you've got a C minor and you're going, okay, look look here's the notes I want here. 
That's all the notes that you get, or this. Right, we sometimes limiting yourself. Okay, now we're going to add an A. Yeah. Yeah. And now we're going to add an A. Yeah, minor six, minor nine. I mean, now, so in, yeah, now, now we're going to add the flat, now we're going to add the major. Yeah. So, you know, introducing specific sounds is a way to begin to develop, to develop vocabulary and locate that information physically on the instrument. Absolutely. Yeah, because I know what this, I know this arpeggio yeah. is. Yeah, so I think the trick is then deconstructing that to create a line that feels like it's not a memory. So this is you mean our kids can't play blues over everything, John? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so let's go back to Dominic for a second. Okay. So what I wanted to say to you was that those four keys give us different combinations of tension, melodic, minor, voice. Uh, okay, we're talking about the half step now and the whole step. Yeah, I mean the four keys are essentially the four modes in order from, again, from most dissonant now to most consonant are seventh mode, second, fifth, and fourth. That translates into melodic minor, a half step above. A whole step below. below fourth and fourth, fifth, 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 fifth. And we said also... Um, the first That's two. a lot to work with right yeah. there, man. So, so the first two, a half step above and a whole tone below, also work as major. So we talked about B flat major is C sus, and also D flat major. D flat major is giving you essentially C phrygia, and that was one of the ones we talked about as phrygian minor. But that's also a nice C seven. It's eleven with a flat nine. Well, that's like you were saying almost the minor set without the A. Yeah, so, so the point I'm making is I could play C-sharp major to C-sharp melodic minor. C-sharp major to what? To C-sharp melodic minor to okay, C7. So, so listen down. Is that harmonic major? Uh, nope, that is, that is major and melodic minor a half step above the dominant. Ouch. Listen. My C sharp melodic minor. So we, whatever it sounds like over the C, it's just this. Very C sharp melodic minor, right? C sharp major. I'm putting C, C in the bass. C sharp major. C sharp melodic minor. Seventh chord and go sure like a flat nine, and then well, that's now you have to change your melodic minor scale. That's right. Now, if I, now, some of this also has to do with what I'm hearing you do. So, if I heard you introduce D flat and G flat on top, then I would probably revert to a C sharp. So on top was D flat. Yeah, if I'm hearing this, if I'm hearing you play this, then I'm going to play probably a C sharp melodic minor. But I could go, I could also introduce again. The, well, the other thing is that we are not trying to match each other exactly when we're playing together, we're just in the moment together. So we might very often, if you're comparing the content of a chord, assuming there's somebody tomping on a solo line, things are not matching exactly. I might play a nine and you're playing a flat nine chord, but because mm. things are moving, it's not critical. It's not critical that we match exactly. Now to train yourself to hear these individual sounds, I think we can, as I said, you can create a backing track where you know in advance that the content, yeah, you're, you're trying to match the content of the chord in the line. Well, sound. what I'm doing now to slow sense to you? Yeah. So but in, in other words, you're trying to match it as a practice tool. And then when you're in a playing situation, we're just reacting to each other in the moment. But as a practice tool, and you know what you're doing before you can be creative, yeah, play you B have flat, to... Play B-flat major to B-flat melodic minor, and then play a C-sus to a C-sus flat nine, as we were doing earlier. So if well, you play B-flat uh, uh, major, you can play a slow bossa nova rhythm, you're playing B-flat major, and you're just dropping that D there with, down to a D-flat. I've got the D-flat on top now. Like B flat C thirteen flat nine. Oh, there's no C in there. So we play like this time. So wait a minute, wait a minute. Thirteen with a sus four. That's C thirteen flat nine. You put it, you grab a C in the bass if you do it over here. Right. Yeah. 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 Oh, so so, so, so the F is kind of more comfortable now. Uh, <laughs> I'm not used to these tensions, John. Well, listen, I'm just like. G melodic minor. B flat melodic minor for that sound. Well, 
Well, this has uh, G melodic minor has E sounds in it too, except it doesn't have that. It doesn't have it doesn't have the B flat though. I mean, it does have the F sharp, but it does not have the G flat. G melodic minor. Oh man. There's G melodic minor. There's. I must have somewhat harmonic for a second. Yeah. Uh, well, harmonic minor gives you something else. By the way, the same four modes of harmonic minor also work over dominant, half above, whole below, fourth and fifth above. Harmonic minor also works over dominant. So C sharp, B flat, F and G, melodic, and harmonic minor. In the case of three of those, you're introducing one additional tension. Same idea, back and forth between the dominant arpeggio and now harmonic minor. Well, that makes me helps me be aware of of what the tensions that the tension I'm not used to. I definitely is F. Yeah, well, it's, it's not, not a tension. It's just sus. Oh, uh, it's just a sus, right? But if we but if we hear the eleven, if we hear the if we hear the the sus and the flat nine together. That's a nice combination of embellishment and tension. The two notes inside the scale down are the 11 and the 13. Those are not tensions. But the, the 11 and the flat 9 and the 13 together is quite a nice sound. 13 is inside the scale. Yeah. And the 11 is inside the scale and the flat 9 is the tension. So. trying to get you to do is isolate specific sounds. Yeah, that's so what I wrote down. So the, the point, I mean, what I'm trying to give you now is just a little bit of new vocabulary. So if I want the F, because it's a, a C... Uh, if you want sus, then you play... The then major, if I C, play then you play the B, B flat melodic minor. B flat, yeah, B flat melodic minor gives you the sus, it also gives you the flat nine. Okay, it gives you, you the want, flat if nine. If you want pure sus with no tension, play major. Right. So B flat major, so the pure B, sus. That gives you the flat nine. Okay, all right, all right, that's... Okay, so I'll take one step at a time here. So now what you can do is go back and forth between major and melodic minor, both on yeah, the thumb. Yeah, that's what you showed me before. And a half step above. And a half step above. And a half step. Well, above. we didn't do that then. We just talked about. Did it, we just we talked about it? Well, let me try it. Melodic minor. It's C sharp major. Give me a vamp to play that then. Sure, right, we could do this. Maybe we could play. Um, play C sharp major, then play C sharp melodic minor. C-sharp minor major 7, go to C on the bass, oh. right, so here's C-sharp major, C on the bass, and here's C-sharp melodic minor, so, okay, okay, good, well, let's just do that then, so here's, I here, hear well, that. essentially what's that giving you, it sounds kind of like Phrygian, but also would work as a C dominant, yeah, yeah, you're just, you're just hearing the F to the E, simple formula. We can either play major or melodic minor, a half step above, or a whole step below. So C Major or melodic minor? Yeah, a half step above, or a whole oh. step below. Okay, and both, both of them. This is all over C dominant. Right. Yeah, so watch. C sharp major, C7, and C sharp melodic minor with C. So your exercise for me is slowly back and forth between slowly back and forth, but and, and and I like this sound because I can, it's right in the sweet spot of the guitar, the the, the B flat to the that's right. You know, so this, you can do this. I mean, if that's easy to take, you can do that same voicing up here. Yeah, I'm going to need to do that. Yeah. So mm -hmm. the point being, what what we're doing here basically is using melodic minors and majors to introduce tensions over dominant. Now, in the case of the B flat, there are no tensions. There's nine, eleven, and thirteen. The other yeah. three introduce some tension. So sl I would suggest slowly, slowly, back and forth between C dominant and any of these. C dominant, nope. just take one, three, five, flat, seven, C, reference this sometimes too. Yeah, take your basic dominant arpeggio with any of these sounds. Yeah, so C dominant with B flat major, 9, 11, and 13. So then we're hearing. Ah! There's the rub right there. That's a lot of tension. 
What the B flat major gives you that the C7 doesn't have are the 9, the 11, and the 13. These notes are not contained in the basic. 